tonight on Evening Magazine. I'm Michael King, and football players and maybe even your kid may thank these two Seattle inventors for saving their lives. I'm St. Brian with one of Seattle's hottest new bands, The Castaways. They play rock and roll with these. Take a road trip to Cedro Woolley for a roadside diner that's been around for 70 years. John, Paul, George, Ringo, and Ken, the Northwest man who ended up in the Beatles' inner circle. And I'm Kim Holcomb at Northwest Film Forum, where the lobby is set up for kids to come and play. A festival kicks off tonight where kids watch the movies and judge them. But first tonight, it's another day, which means it's another chance to talk about the Seahawks. Did you guys see Northwest native Joel McHale representing the Hawks on Ellen today? The Seahawks have been twice. Yep. And uh, they, that last time they lost, but this time uh, they will win because I made a deal with God. Oh, well. Uh, but Peyton Manning, it's like that. Don't you think he should win because it, Peyton, it, it, it shouldn't that happen? Look, new Bronco fan lady. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> He's already won a Super Bowl. Can you believe it is just 10 more days until the Super Bowl? When we're this swept up in it, it can be easy to forget how dangerous the game is. The NFL has been criticized, even faced lawsuits over concussions. But a couple of local inventors may hold the key to combating brain injuries, not just in the NFL, but for your kids. Here's Michael. Hey, even though football players wear helmets, concussions still happen. The only way to really know is to get inside a player's head. Well, now we can. I just wanted him to move his legs. Rich Abel's son, Kyle, loved playing high school football. A uh, linebacker upended him, put him straight down on his head. And Dad loved watching him, but not this time. Uh, he was unconscious for nearly a minute. Uh, you're sitting in the stands and you're watching your son motionless on the field. Kyle did get up, did recover after two years of symptoms, but Rich did not forget. Uh, I said, we've got to figure out a way of watching over these kids. Um, while they played these contact sports. He called his inventor friend, Christoph Mack. So, uh, this, so this is an X patch. Together they developed this patch which measures head impact. And it attaches to the bald bony spot that all of us have behind the ear. It is so new, it is not yet available to the general public. But the NFL is trying it, as is the Department of Defense. Concussion is a problem that gets solved with knowledge, not helmets. Two, one. Here is, uh, is a fully custom uh, laboratory head impact biomechanics apparatus. Or just call it a crash test dummy skull. That is the kind of head impact event that people playing contact sports uh, experience multiple times per day in some cases. So figuring out what the effect of that kind of head impact exposure is on health is what X2 is all about. The X2 Biosystems team simulates impact from football for sure, where they celebrate with headbutts. Players' noggins routinely bang against hard turf. These Stanford players are wearing the X patch, which, in real time, sends the measurement to a computer on the sidelines. Doctors can then determine the severity of the hit. There's always going to be an element of danger, an element of potential injury. Where we win is when everybody involved in what we call the care group gets smarter and is uh, reading off the same page. But football is just the beginning. Boxing, soccer, and really most sports expose the head to collisions. Our mission here is to help everyone get smarter with better information about what's happening to our youth athletes and how to best protect them so they can play hard and play safe. And so kids can keep their head in the game for good. While Christoph and Rich are thrilled that the NFL is interested, their ultimate goal is to get the X patch on five million kids in the next five years. We're here at Northwest Film Forum because there is a festival for kids that kicks off tonight, a film festival bringing movies from around the world, and kids are the judges. It's the ninth annual Children's Film Festival, Seattle. It's the largest film festival of its kind west of the Mississippi. Showcasing movies from more than 30 countries, judged by a carefully selected panel. We have a VIP jury. They are kids, 
ages 10 to 15. Viv Daniel is one of them. I am kind of like a freak for like beautiful, aesthetically pleasing things. At age 14, she's the senior jury member. The panel of kids watches approximately 50 movies and votes for the best ones. I think that like children even across the world are like really easy to empathize with as a young person. It's just a really good way to broaden your ability to create art as well. All the festival's films are geared toward movie lovers ages 3 to 15. The screenings are public, pajamas are welcome, dancing is common, workshops are available, and the international introduction to cinema is completely unique really feed children's minds and let them see the world. It's a way to get out of Seattle. In January, you can take a trip around the world. For kids like Viv, it may also be a window into their futures. Are you a bona fide film critic now? Um, hardly, no. I mean, I definitely know some of the lingo now, but I need much more experience. Well, you're off to a good start. Yes. The festival opens tonight and it runs through February 8th. Well, there is an instrument that kids love that's making a huge comeback, the ukulele. And Saint introduces us to a band tonight who proves you can still rock out on a uke. Right, Saint? That's right. The castaways build themselves as Seattle's loudest ukulele band. Right now, they're riding the biggest uke craze since the 1950s. <laughs> It's not your grandpa's ukulele anymore. In the hands of the masterly musicians who make up the castaways, the uke can actually rock out. It's just a wonderful instrument, and so much music comes out of this, regardless of the style. Hang on to me, hang on to me. I'd like to hang you on my family trio. Oh, and styles have certainly changed. The Jazz Age witnessed the first uke craze as vaudeville stars like Ukulele Ike popularized the tiny four-stringed instrument from Hawaii. Don't you tell me the same things over again cause I'm not gonna wait for you. Another craze swept the country in the 50s thanks to TV star Arthur Godfrey. That's when my own dad started playing one. The latest craze can be traced back to the 90s when Hawaiian artist Israel Kamakalila Ole charmed a brand new audience with his version of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Now Paul McCartney plays a uke on stage and Pearl Jam's Eddie Vedder has recorded an entire album called Ukulele Songs. I know he's, he's kind of riding on our coattails. But. School teacher Jim Abernathy first picked up the ukulele to teach his kindergartners and first graders how to play an instrument. And the more I played with the kids, the more I fell in love with it. A rock and roller at heart, Jim gathered old friends and new to form the Castaways, a ukulele cover band. There's a look that people give to us when they walk by, and they just can't believe they're hearing the music coming out of these small instruments. This is Pam Mandel's first group. I joke that I'm being fast-tracked in the school of rock for the middle-aged. Easy to play and easy to enjoy. The ukulele is the little instrument riding a big wave of popularity, and the castaways are enjoying the ride. Thanks, Saint. I love that band. The castaways are hosting a CD release party tomorrow night at the Feedback Lounge, 9 p.m. They're trying to break our world record, the newest snowball fight attempt later and take a detour to a classic roadside drive-in next.